channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Anne and thank you so much for stopping by today. I do hope you are having a great week so far. In today's episode of Plant Stories, I will give you tips on how to prevent your plants from getting root rot. So if you are that heavy waterer who's always overwatering your plant, this episode is for you. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. welcome back as i said before today we are going to look at how to prevent one of the most popular houseplant disease known as root rot if you see me glancing to the side it's because my notes are there and that i'm i will be glancing on them from time to time so root rot is a very common houseplant disease that attacks the root system of the plants and this spreads very quickly to the entire plant this is usually caused by a bacterial or fungal infection which thrive in wet soil and actually cause the plant's root to suffocate. Root rot can also occur from root being exposed to extremely moist conditions for too long. So the main cause of root rot in house plants is, ta-da, you guessed right, overwatering. So today we will look at how to prevent um, root rot in house plants by watering the right way. In another episode, we will explore um, the measures that we can put in place to, to correct root rot. Yes, if, you, if this is caught early, you can indeed save your precious plants. But we will look at that in another episode. Today, we are just going, going to deal with the prevention. As it is often said, an ounce of prevention is better than cure. So let's get into the meat of things. So one of the most common uh, method to test the, what, um, the moisture level in your plant is the index fingers. So here I have my two aglaonemas, my silver bay and my red emerald. The silver bay is getting close to that time when it needs watering so you can tell my finger is you there's a little bit of um soil on it but not a lot so you can tell that um it is getting to the time but it's not yet that time it um it still it has a little bit of soil on it if it was entirely ready to be watered my finger would come like it, the finger would be clean everything would come off right away no soil would be on it then i have my red emerald here which was watered today and you can see the difference when i stick my finger in and then look at it when it comes out that's how it is because that plant was watered today so it is filled with soil and so you know for sure there is no need this plant does is not in need of water not for um, maybe another week or 10 days. And so this is, this is one of the most popular ways to check to see if your plant is, um, is in need of water. That good old index finger test. Another way to test to see if your plant is in need of water is the drooping or curling of the leaves. Yes, this is my philodendron um, golden goddess and I have it propped here on my trash can aka my watering station and just look at the leaves how they curl. Everything is curled under and the plant is looking oh so droopy. This is a sign that it is thirsty and it's time for a drink. And 
normally um, when I water, I also add a little fertilizer. I fertilize a weekly, W-E-A-K-L-Y. And so here I'm adding a teaspoon of fertilizer to a gallon of water just to give it a little boost. Um, and my method is really unorthodox, but it works for me. So that's, yeah, it works for me. And so I stick to it. So I'm just um, mixing the fertilizer here a little bit. And then I'm going to pour in this container because I bottom water. And um, for me, this works better because I think the plant, um, the plant gets to absorb more of the water and also, you know, it's just more high, fully hydrated, fully saturated than if I just pour some water on top and it runs through, you know, I, yes. Yeah, so I let it sit there for about two and a half to three hours. Sometime it will go, it will go a little longer if I forget, but look at it now. Three hours later, fully saturated and hydrated and looking fresh, alive again. You can tell the difference. So this is one way, especially for um, new plant parents. You, you, you will get used to this over time, but this is one way to tell when your plants um, are in need of water. When the leaves are when looking full and um, everything is um, standing straight and looking fresh, you know they're good. But as soon as you see them curling and start looking, um, compare the picture that I just um, put in, you could tell. You can see a vast difference there, so you can tell from that that once they're looking like that, then it's time for watering. You know that you're on the right path. You don't have to second guess yourself because you know it's time for watering. So that's method number two. And this is, um, this is also widely used, very popular method, the, the drooping or curling of the leaves. And in some plants, they actually, for thicker plants like the Hoyas, when they're in need of water, their leaves become so very thin like if you try to bend them, they will almost fold right in because they're really, really um, dehydrated. The thicker plants, um, succulents and stuff like that, you can tell when they're, when they're in need of water because their leaves are actually becomes thinner. Another very dramatic plant when it is in need of water is the Spatophyllum or the Peace Lily. Look at this one here. All the leaves are flopping. It's just saying, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And then look at the difference after it is watered. It's a brand new plant. So it is, it is, um, that's a very popular method, as I said before, to just um, check your leaves, check your foliage, and you, and, and you can tell right away whether or not. So if, for example, I'm putting them side by side so you can see the difference of um, being thirsty and being watered. Now the third um, method that I use for testing um, moisture in houseplant is the three-way meter here. It tests moisture level, it also tests the pH level and the lighting that the plant receives. Now it numbers from one to ten and the danger zone is between one and three. If you notice, it is, it is red. So when your plant gets to that level, you stick the prongs in, and of course the little, um, the lever will move and indicate the level of what um, moisture in your, in your plant. Between one and three, that's a cry, help, water, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, water me. So you can't miss it. If you miss with the finger test, and you're not, not so observant with the leaves, watching the leaves change, you can't miss with the um, moisture meter because it is very accurate and um, I like it, I use it and I endorse it. And um, you can add this to your collection if you haven't got one, gotten one because it does work. 
So these are the three methods that I use to determine when my plants are in need of water. And I'm sure, and I'm sure that if you practice these methods, you will save yourself the heartbreak of having to deal with root rot. Today's word of encouragement comes from Romans 12 and verse 21. And it says, do not be overcome and conquered by evil, but overcome evil with good. And um, it would be remiss of me to sit here and not acknowledge that over the last few years, people in general have become more anxious, high strung, and just on edge. You know, there are fewer smiles and people are less, um, you have less personal interactions. And it's as if we have forgotten how to amicably disagree on any subject matter. But while this scenario describes our current reality, it will not be the focus of today's talk. Instead, we'll be looking at the goodness. We will be looking at goodness all around us. While we can't be oblivious to the evil in our communities and our country at large, we should not allow this to prevent us from consistently doing good and also to encourage and promote goodness wherever we go, whenever possible. Because truth be told, there's a lot of goodness around us. And case in point, last week I was at the grocery store on my day off and this lady ahead of me, she had a bunch of roses in her hand and um, the cashier told her that it's buy one, get one. So she went back to get her second bunch and then she checked out and she went, away, went her way. I too checked out, went, got my stuff in my car and I was about to drive. I was about driving um, from the parking lot when I saw her coming towards me. I put my window down and she had, um, she had a, bun, um, a couple of roses in her hand and she said, hi, this is for you. Have a nice day. And I was like, wow, thank you. You know, um, this made my day, you know, and I share this to say that um, we still have good people around and we still have goodness around us. And it may not be something big. No, it doesn't have to be something major, but little things. Little things, little deeds of kindness that makes this world a more pleasant place to live in. You know, so we should highlight these. We should share them because um, people are focusing on the evil or the bad things that are happening. And when we focus on those things, it's as if they, they multiply. So my encouragement for you today is to continue to do good and also continue to shine a light on goodness whenever you see it. Don't get discouraged by darkness. Don't be, um, you know, be, um, yeah, people tend to get discouraged when you see all of these things happening around. Don't be discouraged by the darkness around. Just keep on shining your light because no matter the intensity of darkness, it can never extinguish light. And that's my thought and my encouragement for today. Okay, guys, this is where I say so long from this video. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It was my pleasure to bring it to you. And thank you so much for, um, especially to my new subscribers. Thank you so much. And my regulars, I love you all so, so much. Guess what? I am at triple digit, triple digit, triple digit. Thank you all so much. I never despise small beginnings. So, you know, a year or so from now, we look back with fun memories. But right now, I am elated. And I thank you all so, so much. Please continue to watch my video and to share. And of course, please don't forget to give me that big thumbs up if you like the content. Thank you for watching. And until my next video, bye.